All right, so my friends, welcome. I'm doing a match review of Worlds of my feature matches. I've only, only featured a few times. Uh, I have this one main feature here, which we're gonna watch, uh, where you see the entire match. And then I believe they cut to me twice uh, in two other matches where it was like game two or game three. Uh, so this is a feature match on day one where I was playing uh, Esper in standard. This is an Esper mirror against Logan Nettles. Uh, Logan was of course very, very good. At this point we were both, uh, I think four and two. Uh, on day one, I won to the draft. I did a recap of the event. You can watch it on YouTube. Uh, but pretty cool on the stage here. Everything obviously was really, really cool. Definitely a different vibe playing on a computer as opposed to playing in paper. Um, I have music out of my headphones. Just a little, a little MF Doom. Get myself going here, and uh, we're gonna go to the match and we'll take a look and see how it goes. I can't believe they have the taskbar here on uh, on actual stream. I can't believe that was there for uh, for this. But I'll be watching from Logan's side. I'm sure, we should actually speed this up. I think like the usual. So let's get this up to 1.5 kill the audio so let's see what we got here and slide me over a little bit so uh fortunately i mulligan to five here which is not a good place to be and i believe i was on the draw also so not not ideal not ideal we were allowed to use untap that's correct hashtag uh sponsored so um you know two card and i mean i mean uh five card i was in the play i'm sorry so i wanted to roll but mulligan to five uh we got danic peacekeeper removal spell draw shield it's not the worst hand of all time honestly and uh Checking some settings here. Denik on turn two. Uh, of course, being down two cards on the draw, uh, it's tough because the Esper Mirror and Standard is a lot about a lot about tempo, but can get grindy as the games go on. And uh, on only five cards, it can be hard to keep playing a good threat every turn, which is kind of tough. So, we see Dog here, Grasp, Interceptor, Void Rend. I'm actually go a little faster than this, honestly, because uh, we can always pause if we need to. Of course, the these feature matches are very very high stress uh both players take their time for sure so we see underdog here i draw a fiend but of course no third land so take the aggressive line of grasping the denic i mean i mean the underdog here really my only chance to win this match uh is to have a curve out have logan stumble and steal the game by drawing a land and playing rafine miss on land again which is obviously uh not so good double shielded rafine and I would see a Void Rend here. Again, not the best kill spell of all time on Denik. But of course, Logan knows. Logan knows, just like I'm trying to win the game quickly, Logan knows that because he's already up three cards, being on the draw and the double mulligan, he should stay alive. So, uh, unfortunately, I miss on land again. Uh, Logan has the one of Obscure Interceptor in his main deck to counter it uh, and, and bounce it back to my hand. At this point, the game is almost already over. Um, you know, with uh, now Logan has, has five mana, has Denik, Pious Apparition, the Interceptor. I still have two lands. I'm going to keep playing here, obviously. But, uh, yeah. You know, if I had curved out this game, if I had Rafine on three and Shielded on four, maybe I could have pushed through and got things going. But um, the problem is that when you mulligan to five, you really have to have a good tempo draw to keep things going. Uh, and uh, I didn't have that. And so being down on cards and on tempo with no lands made this basically just a kind of a wash here. So play it out. You know, let Logan use his clock a little bit. We're obviously playing super high stakes here. I draw the land! <laughs> Uh, a little too late to play a peacekeeper here and yeah this game's already basically over so we can move on to the next uh the next one here and this is important though because like you know magic this happens in games of magic and when you're playing in a really high stakes event uh being able to handle games like this is a uh a huge factor in being successful at magic because this is going to happen some percentage of the time how you handle it and how you react to it is exceedingly important uh so here i am taking a stride hop on over to sideboarding we see here uh, the differences in deck list. Um, we can pause here. Uh, Logan's got a few interceptors in the sideboard in main, uh, playing three copies of Destroy Evil, a Miser Spell Pierce, uh, and then sideboard rest has some Lilianas, some uh, Siphon Insights. Uh, being on the play here, uh, again, I'm going to have a full sideboard guide for Esper in my Cool Stuff article uh, this Friday coming up. But Kaido comes in on the play, uh, bringing some Kaidos. Uh, we bring in, um, what else do you bring in? Just the Kaidos, and I think that was really it. Bring Kaidos. We don't sideboard too much. So we was, we were, our deck was already kind of built for the mirror. Um, the headphones on. Uh, there are music headphones, earbuds, and then the big headphones are playing white noise. Uh, so he blocks out the commentators and blocks out the sounds in the outside world. So it's a pretty common thing in like esports -y events to have a white noise headset to block out the sound. So sideboarding here. Uh, and we see uh, I'm bringing in mostly Kaido. That's really it. And then uh, Logan... Looks like Logan is bringing cut down. Pretty common sideboarding for the mirror is that the player on the play brings in Kaidos and the player on the draw brings in cutdowns uh, to not fall behind. 
Ludovic in the main, uh, I explained it earlier. Uh, I've been in the article as well. It's, it's the best possible to drop. Uh, highest value, better later in the game. Great hit of Ajo. I'll go to it later. So, look at my seven card hand here. It's not very good. Uh, we have five lands, Emperor, Grasp. I could have mulliganed this, honestly. I think I was a little scared to mulligan to five again. Uh, so, I ended up keeping. Uh, it's not great. I probably should have mulliganed, honestly. Yeah, I think that was a little, a little rattled from the first game, maybe. Uh, the hand's okay, but not great. The mana's perfect. So, it's perfect mana, a kill spell, an Emperor, but nothing, nothing really to curve out on, unfortunately, which is not super great. Uh, obviously, Castle could also be a spell, too. But I think that if I could go back in time, I'd probably make myself mulligan this hand. Uh, but you know, after mulligan to five and basically playing no lands in game one, I can sort of see why I'd be a little shell-shocked and not want to mulligan this. So Logan thinks for a while about the hand. Mulligan's down uh, to not a great hand here. Logan's only got a black land and a white land. Uh, no blue sources, no third land. But unfortunately, my hand can't really punish... Uh, so we see an underdog here. Logan draws the Shattered Sanctum. So there's land number three in the wedding announcement, uh, but no blue. And I draw land, land, making my hand as worse as it could possibly be. Uh, so obviously if I drew any spell across two or three there, my hand gets a lot better, but I didn't. That's the risk of keeping that hand though. So honestly, not very thrilled with my keep here, uh, but what are you going to do? So we see Logan draw our Fiend's Tower. There's a blue source. I grasp underdog, which I'm not really happy about, but I think I need to keep the pressure up. Uh, announcement here is the worst thing possible for me. Uh, we draw Shieldred, which is pretty cool. So draw Shieldred. Now you decide if I want to leave up Emperor or just, or just slam Shieldred. Uh, I, I, I play a land and say go here. I wanted to get Emperor going, get some 2 2s in play, and try to play some defense. Ely said afterwards he would have, have slammed Shieldred, uh, which would have died to the uh, the Void Rend, I guess, the next turn. But I can't know. You know, Logan had three Destroy Evils and two Grasp in the deck. So uh, Logan wisely doesn't attack here. Uh, Logan's hand is very awkward. No blue mana just yet. I get to play Emperor, resolve it. Uh, we see Make Disappear and Void Ren just kind of hanging out doing nothing. Uh, Emperor makes a 2 2. And then I draw Destroy Evil, which can kill the announcement, but now, like, we're already past the point of, uh, you know, kind of no return here as far as announcement goes. So, need to decide. Emperor wants to make another token. If I want to go up, if I want to use Destroy Evil on the announcement, don't want to cast Shieldred. Like, I'm not thrilled to cast Shieldred here against the open mana because we're still scared of uh, Infernal Grasp and Destroy Evil. So, I'm pretty sure I just uh, attack here. I have a Ganjo if I want to uh, stop a double block. They don't do that. Make a second token because I want to go a little wider. And then I play land and I have the ability to destroy evil the wedding announcement uh, on uh, Logan's turn. But now Logan's online. Pro the second blue source. Now Logan has access to Rafine, Make Disappear, uh, Void Brand, Emperor. And it looks like uh, Logan just goes to pass here, living up Emperor and Make Disappear. I go for evil to kill the announcement on the second main phase. Now, this is important to note that while this destroys the announcement before that the token is made, we're back in Logan's main phase. Logan can then cast a main phase spell if he wanted to. Uh, not going to here based on the hand, probably. Although my cast Rafine and play to make spell. I think that's not actually what happened. So, unfortunately, though, I mean, I, again, this hand didn't really have enough tempo-y, like, curve-out stuff for me. But also didn't really have any late game cards either, like an Aho or something like that to build towards. So, yeah, not, not really a greatest hand. We see Disappear here. And uh, Logan actually goes for the, the, the Disappear to, to, to sacrifice a token. And uh, I actually like, like this a lot from Logan. So, only one makes appear in the entire deck. Kind of very hard to play around these single counter spells. But this keeps the announcement around. And uh, Logan could have cast Rafine there and declined to. Which is interesting. Wanted to leave up Void Rend. Um, it's interesting, honestly. We, I draw, I draw and cast Peacekeeper again, trying to keep the shoulder safe, trying to find a good spot to play it a little bit later in the game. A resolve shoulder is very, very important. And we see instead, Logan goes for the Void Rend on the the uh, the Wandering Emperor. You see my my perplexed face there because obviously I had lost the chance to activate the Wandering Emperor because I I wanted to cast Peacekeeper first and see what happened, but. If Logan gave me the chance to use it and should have maybe killed the Emperor before I had priority to even use it. So I'm kind of surprised that, you know, that, that how that worked out. Um, I think because Peacekeeper was being cast, Logan felt like he needed to cast a spell. But like, pretty weird, like, little situation there where it looks like I make a mistake by not using Emperor. But like, if Logan has the kill spell to kill it, they, he probably would have anyway already. So kind of a weird scenario. And uh, I fire him for an attack. I have the castle, uh, which I believe I might end up using here. I don't remember exactly. Uh, but... Firing for attack, get some damage in. At this point, I'm pretty behind. Uh, and shrinking the board means that my Peacekeeper can attack into the 2 2. However, now we see Rafine here. We see another Emperor, which is awkward. Um, so there's Rafine. 
We kill the token to fizzle the uh, to fizzle the connive ability. Draw tower. And if I drew a kill spell exactly this turn, I think things might have been all right uh, as it stands. But um, fire up Shieldred, which is going to answer Dorfine, obviously. Can't really attack. And we see uh, a land drawn. It's actually looking pretty good here. So Shieldred resolves and no current answer for uh, for Logan. Logan, I think, fires in the attack here to go for the Luke. Logan kind of just has to find an answer to Shieldred. Uh, but at this point, I'm going to just go, actually. So yeah, he has the Emperor. Emperor currently costs six. I named Emperor with Peacekeeper, meaning that it costs six and costs two to use. I draw Destroy Evil, which can kill the Rafine. And you decide if I want to do better or not, though. And I believe I do. So, honestly, pretty good spot for me. Um, I decided to have a Shieldred. And just so I don't go over there Destroy Evil on the Rafine. Which I'm honestly not sure if I was even right or not. Um... And there's the Emperor, which kills the shield Yeah, I don't know if I like that play, honestly. Um, I'm not sure why I chose to not destroy evil the Rafine. Destroy evil Rafine, I can attack with everything. Um, and then this didn't play around the Wandering Emperor very well, because now uh, Logan can just use the Emperor by paying two. I think that was a really bad play, honestly. Ugh. The stress and pressure of the feature match, you know? Um... So yeah, I, I, I don't really know what my thought process was. Oh, I have Plaza. Okay, that's reasonable. All right, never mind. You're good. Good catch, Alien. Good catch. So I have Plaza just to save my shoulder from the uh, Emperor. Correct. Okay, so that was the thought process. Good catch. Um, so I'll leave leaving Plaza up to save a shoulder. If I cast Destroy Evil, it costs four. I couldn't leave Plaza up. So in the currently, in the Protect the, uh, protect the Queen, we see an Aho here, which is obviously pretty brutal because it was, you know, it, it's the best card in the matchup. I don't have a clean answer for it. And then we see the Wandering Emperor can be used to make a Samurai for two mana. And then, uh, now I'm in the very unenviable position of having to destroy Evil and Aho almost assuredly, which sucks. Uh, but, kind of a shrug here, not very happy about it. We don't really, we didn't really have any clean answers to Aho in our deck. Uh, you know, no exile effects or Rotor's Vortex or whatever. So, fire and the destroy Evil. I'm going to kill the Aho and kind of cross my fingers here and, uh, Spoiler, it's not going to go that well. <laughs> it's not going to go that well. The being a feature of my mental state, um, I mean, honestly, it was about as stressful as all, all the other, other matches. This is the most stressed I've ever been in a tournament in my entire life. Uh, very, very stressful event. I have felt sick for the last few days, honestly. <laughs> I have not felt so good. So, kill the dragon, and unfortunately, a. it's funny because Logan's deck list was lighter on hits than ours was. Part of the point of us playing Ludovic was it was such a, such a, such a, such a good hit for Aho. Uh, in the mid game. So we had so many good hits. And on this board state, uh, a Rafine's a blank. Apparently he actually boarded out all the Shieldreds. Uh, Emperor is not bad, but not great. Uh, so a lot of the possible hits aren't even there in his deck. And he just nails 2-2 two, two drops with a, with a Crusade effect in play, which is absolutely brutal. Uh, so you can see I'm not very happy about that one. So absolutely brutal. And now I have Shieldred, but there's so much stuff in play now. 3-4 uh, Lifelinker, 4-3... Both have graveyard effects. It's about the most value possible. Um, Rafine's still in play. And now it's just like kind of hard for me to get through. Um, play Rafine. My attacks aren't great. And because I'm empty-handed, I can't bank on Rafine actually pumping the creature up. You know, so if I if I knew that I was in a plus two plus two here, like the, the Peacekeeper could go in, in theory or something like that, but I can't really attack anymore. And uh, things starting to fall apart, unfortunately. I actually sent Peacekeeper and shouldered in, trying to hit some spells. I only hit one, unfortunately, so I have a 4-4 Peacekeeper going in. Uh, I do have the Plaza to still save Shouldered, but uh, Logan can double block here, and I trade Plaza for two creatures, and then he can use the Emperor to kill the Shouldered. So I get to trade Shouldered and Plaza for Emperor and two creatures, which is pretty good. Why attack with Shouldered? Because uh, I got to do something with it. I gotta get somewhere, I think. Uh, I think that was, you know, I also wanted to loot. I mean, I mean uh, you get the value out for Fiend. Um, if Shieldred stays home... Hmm. Yeah, maybe it was wrong, honestly. It is a really good exchange. I'm trading a land and a shoulder for three cards. Uh, and putting him down to almost nothing. But maybe I could have just hung back and just not attacked at all. Um... With Logan at nine, Logan was actually like at less than that was eight life. 
Uh, maybe that was wrong too, honestly. Yeah. Maybe I'm just bad. What are you, what are you gonna do? You know, like, <laughs> it's always easy to look back on the matches afterwards, you know, and, uh, and figure things out. But yeah, maybe that was just wrong, actually. Um, the problem is Logan also has the Danik and the Underdog in the graveyard too for extra value. Um, anyway, I felt like if I just sat there forever though, he would just find an answer to the thing anyway. I don't know. I'm not sure. Honestly, maybe it was wrong. Maybe it was wrong. But now things have completely fallen apart. I've fallen apart, obviously, because now I've lost actual everything. Uh, I draw a grass, but now with the Danik in play and the Underdogs in play, we're just like pretty screwed. So draw Odawara, I get Underdog going. Um, And, uh, and yeah, we see the, uh, Rafine going. At this point, there's, you know, very little coming back. I guess Ajo would have been great, but, yeah, I guess if we don't attack, then we, uh, we just kind of sit back on our, uh, our shouldered, drain some life, um, yeah, I'm not sure, honestly. I think I just valued the, uh, the exchange, but didn't really think about keeping shoulder in play, kind of doing it that way, so, now we, uh, Logan's at seven, but we see the, the underdogs drawing cards, or Fiend's drawing cards. Uh, Odawara's here to, to, to bounce the token if necessary. I'm just going to do it now. I'm not exactly sure why now, honestly. But, yeah, I'll, AO is basically the best draw at all times, but play an announcement. Then we got underdogs coming out of everywhere. And now you can see underdog uh, blitz and underdog uh, cast, too. Yeah, just tons of value. Rafine is just so good. Once Rafine starts to snowball, uh, the Rafine player's hand is like perfect for the rest of the games. So it's really, really hard to come back to. So, wedding year a little late. Not super great. Tough match. I could have played. I could have better this game for sure. Uh yeah. I have music on. I have music on. I think it was MF Doom for this uh, particular match. We were allowed to have the uh, just like YouTube music up. So yeah, they got the clues going here. Um, and yeah, down to 10. Rafine's getting huge. Yeah. Could you see your opponent for reactions? Not really. Like, peak, you know, I can see the top of his head, but not really, honestly. Definitely a very different experience playing on a computer, uh, as opposed to, like, playing face-to-face, -face, you know. Even though we were face-to-face, -face, technically, we couldn't, like, really see each other and stuff, so. Thanks, Rogue. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's cut down, and we're just dead here, so. So, yeah, tough match. Obviously, game one was kind of shitty, but... Definitely going to play better this game, I think. I'd love to keep. And then I think we kind of threw shoulder away also. So maybe I could have won this game. For sure. For sure. But so tough game. This put me down to uh, four and three. But again, after a one a one and two start, wasn't too bad. I, I, I win the final match on day two. On day one, I'm sorry, to finish uh, to finish five and three. Which is pretty good. Had me in like seventh place, I think, or eighth place. Or no, I'm sorry. Maybe like ninth place, I think, after uh, after day one. So that's this match. Uh, nothing else to do here. And we'll go on to our, our next match here. Next up is a uh, match against Julian Wellman. This is on day two. Uh, pretty late in day two. We're coming into game number two here. Uh, I'm already up a game as a backup feature match. Uh, both eight and four. And uh, four losses is the lock for top eight. So, you know, the loser here will probably not, not be making top, sorry, top four. Uh, so very, very important match. Uh, Julian was playing the Teamer Transmorgify deck. A few of the players played. That was pretty sweet. And uh, we can see here, I am on the draw. And my hand is pretty good. We got Snare, Sailor, Phantom. Pretty good hand for, uh, for Julian also. A couple of removal spells, a Luka, an Omen. I didn't I didn't go over the draft itself completely. Uh, I showed the deck. It wasn't very good. Uh, I tr I'm trying to get the the draft footage from Watsi if I can. And the feature match footage that wasn't shown. Uh, but I can't promise I'll be able to get that. So, we'll see. We'll see. My draft just didn't, it just didn't go very well. So here's Sailor. I think Julian's deciding if, if he wants to kill it now uh, or on my turn. I think killing it now is correct. Um, not give me a chance to protect it. So it's Firehouse Prophecy. And this is the huge difference in play and draw here, of course, because on the play, uh, I'd already have the obsession on it with the slip at the back and okay, Slice Snare up. Uh, so obviously Mono Blue is insane on the play, and but still good on the draw. So to play a Phantom here, uh, you know, another rule spell, sure, whatever. I'll draw some, uh, some rule spells. Uh, the, event, the event was very smooth. Yeah, very smoothly run. Very fun, stressful event. Spell Pierce, the draw for Julian. It's Omen of a C, Luca. Spell Pierce, not a great hand, honestly. Um, not a great hand for either players. I don't draw another threat, but I have Borrower here. 
We see another land for Julian. And, uh... Decides not to, uh, buy Yorian and play Omen instead. I decided to not play Borrower because I want to be able to protect it. It's my last threat. So I want to leave a slip and spell pierce up. So, just say go. We see an Omen here. We're just going to resolve. And, uh, bottom two land. Sure. Good to see a bottom from my side. We love a good bottom here. Right? And, uh, draws another land. Sure. Again, my hands are kind of threat light. It's kind of weird to have, uh, Borrower as my only threat. But it's okay. That's okay. Again, if you, if you missed it earlier, uh, my team played this mono blue deck. We went 17 in three in non mirrors, which is insane at a tournament like Worlds. So, play Tapland. Gonna buy the Yorian, leaving up the Spell Pierce. This opens the door for me to play my, my Borrower very safely and get the Obsession on it. So, here's your end step Borrower. And uh, just want to get that clock going. Honestly, the good news about Borrower is it's actually also a clock. Uh, a Borrower with, with Obsession on it is a you know a five-turn clock, which is great. So here's your Obsession. Get things rocking and rolling. Again, the absence of Rending Volley is a huge plus for the Mono Blue deck in, in Explore. So Obsession. Uh, not sure what Julian's thinking about here. I think Spell Pierce must be pretty, be pretty crazy. So now I have a one mana... I'm sorry, two mana Geist Light Snare up and a Spell Pierce up and a Slip up. So we draw a Rattle Change, which of course cannot protect my Brazen Borrower, being not a spirit. We got, <clears throat> excuse me, Tap Land for Julian. Uh, Luca, but no creatures to utilize with it, uh, as well as Yorian, which can block my creature. And there aren't as many ways to counter a Yorian than uh, there are to counter a non-creature spell, obviously with cards like Spell Pierce, but... Julian, I think about this one for a little bit, and I think ultimately decide to say go. Has Soul Seer and Spell Pierce to try and kill my borrower, so I believe I go for the end step rattle chains here. And unfortunately, that'll open the door for uh for Julian to be able to kill my borrower. So I go rattle chains, fire up soul spear, and uh I go for the slip out the back. And unfortunately, Julian has exactly spell pierce, so has exactly two mana up for my spell pierce. So it just doesn't work out. And again, of course, Borrower being not a spirit means Geist Light's Nair cost too. So we got our card back off of the Curious Possession here and we ended up, you know, trading resources. So not exactly the best exchange for me. Um, I still think playing Rattle Chains is correct. Uh, you know, Julian has to have double interaction there that plays through Spell Pierce, which ended up, which ended up, ended up being what happened. But draw a second Rattle Chains, have Spell Pierce and Geist Light's Nair. There's Transmorgify, but again, nothing to actually uh, Transmorgify. So Luca, Transmorgify, but nothing to do with it. And then Yorian. The tap land here is um, also kind of clutch too, because it means that um, a cash to Luca can be spell pierced. Definitely Julian starting to turn the corner, uh, but not quite there. I get to pierce the Luca. Play another Rattle Chains. I still have this mana leak up in Geist Light Snare. Unfortunately, Julian's making a lot of land drops too, so now things get a little scary. Draw an adversary, which is actually kind of cool. Um, can be a decently sized creature, can protect the creature or get rid of a creature. We see Fry here. Here comes Yorion with two mana up. So, of course, Sky Slant Snare, the perfect answer. What's up, R4? Appreciate it. Thanks so much. Thanks to Resub Canary. So, I uh, counterspell the Yorion, which is very important. Obviously, it's a big blocker, too. Gotta to decide I want to cast Adversary here as a 2 1, or I want to save it to kick it. Um, I think with, with Julian at 10, Adversary is able to break up Transmorgify and protect my things and be a larger creature. So, I decided to hold on to it. And uh, Julian gets punished here because Julian decides to hold on to the fry till my turn, and I draw Rattle Chains. Oh, it's oh my God. What's up, CGB? Watching the match in the viewing area? Sweet. Yeah, the ocean viewing area was a little bit bigger, honestly. Um, so I got the chains there and, and fry. I think that might have cost Julian the game. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, because obviously I, I would have lost chains, so I would have another chains in play. And Julian draws for turn. It's got to be a big one here. And deciding if Julian wants to omen or not. But at six life. Uh, might just need to draw a uh, a way to make a token so he can make, go, go, over, go over, the, over the Morgify. Now, Julian brought in uh, Hornet Queen as the big top-end finish. Of course, he doesn't draw a thing, and there's the game. So, whew! Game. Big match win here. Uh, of course, the cheeky Transmorgify, your creature. And uh, that's a concession, basically. And there you go. So, no, the main deck target was Titan of Industry. But the, uh, the cyborg target was the Hornet Queen. 
And it's funny, actually, because Jacob actually beat Double Hornet Queen out of Julian in a match, too, which is, which is sick. Which is sick. So. Okay, we have some. All right, so. Unfortunately, in the final round, I got paired against Jakob. And, of course, Jakob was my teammate playing the exact same deck. Jakob was probably in with a loss anyway, having the best breakers, but we had to play. Um, and uh, I lost a game one where I, I, I mulliganed and Jakob drew the one Brazen Borrower to get my Curious Possession off the board on game one. So I lost game one. Here we are in a very complicated game two where Jakob has drawn all four Supreme Phantoms and double Shredder. Uh, so I'm being way outsized here, but I have the Shacklegeist. Uh, and it's interesting that um, Jakob played two Shacklegeist. Me and Ely played one Shacklegeist, one Adversary. So we didn't love the card, but it is very important in the mirror. Like, uh, so Siggy played uh, Reed Duke in the mirror. And Reed had four Shacklegeist main and four Dispute in the board. Got absolutely destroyed. Uh, those are not, uh, not what we were playing in our deck. Uh, but... All right, so... Board state, a lot to parse, but realistically, the, the problem here is that I have Shacklegeist, which can tap two spirits, tap one creature, but Jakob has five, or I'm sorry, six huge creatures. Uh, and the problem that the mirror is, there's a lot of one threes uh, between Supreme Phantom and Ledger Shredder. So it's kind of hard to attack. I got the early damage, as we can see, with Jakob at five, but Jakob just kept playing larger creatures, made it harder and harder to attack. Uh, I only have four mana in place. So I couldn't really use my Sailors that well. Uh, and just a really, really tough game, honestly. This game was on for a long time. Uh, Shredder's uh, a card for the mirror in aggro decks. Uh, Shredder was really, really good. Like, uh, Reed played a very stock version of a deck, which we think was much worse overall, but obviously better in the mirror. Uh, we had a lot of tech in our deck. Our Shredders were great. Our lay ones were great. Again, I'll do a full breakdown of a deck and sideboard guide in my article on CoolStuffInc.com on Friday. Look for that one. So, draw Sailor, and... Uh, Every spirit is good, because now I have two, four... This is my seventh spirit. So every every spirit, um, every two spirits, is, it's a tap. The problem is that, like, we don't have enough, way, enough ways to tap down all the things. So Jakob's at five can't really attack me, because, obviously, at five life, the alpha would, would attack back for the lethal. But all my things are so small, I just can't really push the damage through. So I may face a sailor, which looks a little weird. The point of this is to not trigger Shredder. So if I have to cast Spell Pierce on Jakob's turn... Uh, I don't want a double spell and cast Shredder. So I just main phase the, the Sailor, get into the play. And again, now I, up, I choose to upkeep the tap here with Chaco Geist because of Rattle Chains. Uh, obviously, Jakob already has chains. I didn't know that. But I don't want Jakob to be able to draw Rattle Chains. So tap two Phantoms down, say go. I only have one tap left because, of course, Borrower is not a spirit. Borrower can only block Flyers as well. I believe Leyline was Ely's idea. So Jakob draws another land here. Now, it's funny because Jakob has more lands than I do. Uh, and the lands would be a lot better on my side because I have two mana sinks in Sailor and Spirit. Uh, but wasn't able to get, to get that going, unfortunately. So again, there's huge creatures here. Got the Chains and the Haven. And uh, I can tap down a few things here, but I still can't really push through. So this this goes on for a while, unfortunately, of this sort of stare down of uh, Jakob's large creatures with my board. I don't tap before attackers because there's so many big things anyway. I'll let one Shredder come in. Just take the damage here, which is fine. And uh, end step, I'll tap one thing down. Tap down one of the phantoms. But again, I can't really get through because none of my things are big enough to get through. Path to victory is to draw a lot of spirits. Uh, draw a haven here. And then haven can draw, draw a card with sailor and just try and keep drawing cards and playing more spirits. Uh, it's, it's a very, very difficult board state though. And the problem is also, you can see I only have eight minutes left. Just an unbelievably difficult board state to parse each turn. This is also literally the most stressful match I have ever played in my entire life. Probably Jakob's also. I mean, Jakob is probably in with a loss anyway. But I am playing right now for top four of Worlds and possibly $100,000. Uh, so, unfortunately, this is the backup feature, so we don't, don't have the cams. But you, so, all I have is a static image here. I promise you I'm sweating bullets right now. And um, so, there is no lethal attack here. Um, this might have been the turn where I now... I know Paul Chion was saying in the uh, in the chat, so I could have gone for lethal here, right? So uh, I could go tap a creature, tap a creature, tap a creature, and then attack with my spirit in the air and then pump it, right? We have two, two, two. The problem is if Jakob has a Chains or a Spectral Sailor or a Brazen Borrower, I lose the game literally on the spot. Uh, so... Yeah, going for the kill here. And of course, Jakob does have the Rattle Chain. So it would have not have worked. I would have lost the game on the spot. So um, I think that uh, 
Cheon was saying that I could have like maybe fired up the Haven. Uh, because the Haven's also another tap as well. Uh, and then gone for attack or whatever, something like that. So uh don't go forward here to keep to keep the old shackle guys thing going on. You can see now I'm kind of just like doing things faster because my clock is low. Because the problem is I'm down a game here. So if I if I even if I win this game, I don't win game win game win, win game three fast. And these games tend to slog like this. Me and Ely played also. My only two losses on day two were to my teammates. I lost to Ely and I lost to Jakob, uh, which sucks unfortunately. But um, the mirror gets really bogged down. So my clock was a huge issue, but the, it just so much to computate every single turn. It was so difficult. So fires up the Haven. I have my own Haven fired up. I have uh, two more taps available uh, and the bar were to block too. And again, Jakob is kind of walking the tightrope here of wants to pressure, but can't go too deep because if he does, I can maybe tap down blocker, tap down. If I don't die, I can tap down the remaining blocker, maybe win, swing, swing really the next turn. So uh, I don't tap because I want Jakob to overcommit possibly. Here comes Shredder and Haven. And I think I block with the Haven here, because the problem with the Haven is I have to, keep, have to keep activating it over and over again. And I really want to draw a card with freaking Sailor, but I kind of just, like, couldn't. So tap a Phantom. And then I think Jakob goes for the Rattle Chains here to, to keep it untapped. A little safety valve here. So the Chains here suck, because the Chains also... Without the Chains here, I might have also had Lethal, but obviously Jakob knows that. So tap down one more thing. Chains keeps it keeps it untapped because of the uh, thing. I lose a thing, take some damage now, I'm at 8... And now is the sick part. So Jakob has now left himself dead to a spirit, uh, I believe. So we have one tap, two tap, three tap, and then I can tap, tap, tap. No, not this turn. Uh, not lethal yet. There was a turn where I drew Shredder, and if it had been a spirit, I would have won. It was not this turn. Uh, so... Again, trying to work it all out. I can tap some things, uh, but not everything. I can pump the spirit, but then I can't play a blocker. So this turn we didn't have it. So there you go. And Jakob draws his own shackle guys, which is not good for us, obviously. It's even worse for us. So things things are really slipping away here, unfortunately. Uh, um, and now Jakob has the ability to tap my things as well. Uh, I tap a phantom. In response, Jakob's gonna tap on my things. I think it's just like it's like just absolutely disgusting, disgustingly complicated game state. Um, so I tap, Jakob taps. Whatever Jakob taps, I tap back. Um, taps a shredder, but I can't. I can't use it to tap. Obviously, uh, fires up the Haven. I'm at eight. I have a 4-4 blocker, which can block the 3 power shredder or the borrower. What's up, Jones? Thanks for the resub. Just like, my head is even like, just like, I'm going to get headache just looking at this, honestly. Oh, I, ha I have phantoms. I just didn't draw them. Uh, so, here comes the chains. Here comes shredder. Here comes haven. And now I want to be in a spot where I can block and tap as many things as possible. And this is the turn where I almost don't care about my stuff anymore. Because I need to draw spirit win the game next turn. So I need to block with the smaller things. The small things don't matter because they're so small. What matters is getting that ascendant spirit through. Pumping it and then going for lethal. Uh, so tap down the phantom. Make some chump blocks. The bar doesn't really matter because I can't tap stuff anyway. So. So I draw Shredders. Now, this is the turn where if that Shredder had been any spirit, I believe I win the game. So I have one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I have two taps from the spirits. Yes. Nope. Yes. So I can tap two spirits, tap Shredder. Two spirits, tap Geist. I played a spirit. Spirit and Chains tap Borrower, and Ascendant Spirit and Shredder attack for lethal for five. But of course I drew Shredder, unfortunately, which is not a Spirit, which means I was just a little bit short. Um, and then of course the problem is not winning this turn means I'm absolutely dead next turn. Uh, so the problem also is that I, I, only, I only have four minutes left here. So even if I had drawn the Spirit, game three would have been so hard on the draw to try to win in four minutes. Um, talk about pressure. You know, like, 
<laughs> yeah, this is pressure. How about trying to win a game that fast, you know? And like we board out the the obsessions in the mirror because there's so many one three flyers. I probably would have had to board them back in and just try and, and she's out of game. Uh which would have been insane uh on the draw. But so you know, the fact that I even though I, I bricked here, uh, I might have still lost. And I'm like, I'm trying to figure it out. Is there any way to get the damage through? Uh, and there isn't. And this one, I'm just dead anyway. So I just like tap some things and attack and like whatever. It doesn't actually matter. So maybe he screws up on the bar or I don't know. I don't know. Just, just send it, whatever, you know, like. So I get it for, for three here. Obviously not lethal. And, uh, and that's it. That's the loss, uh, unfortunately. So uh, they don't show on the YouTube here the reaction, but I'll find it. So here's the reaction shot from the, uh, from the coverage. Uh, and I just want to say how proud I am of my team. Um, you know, I didn't know Jakob going to this event. I obviously known Siggy for, me and Siggy teamed at a pro tour like 15 years ago. Known Ely for a long time. He's a great dude. Uh, didn't know Jakob at all, but, you know, we killed this event. I don't know. I, I have no shame saying that. Um, second, third, and fifth, you know, obviously, um, losing to a teammate, playing for top four, took a lot of his thing out of it. There's Siggy versus Ely. You know, obviously, I'm I'm pretty sad here. Uh, yeah, like, yeah, Corey, Corey came to console me. I love Corey. Corey's a really great guy. Good friend of mine, obviously. And, uh, get up, go over, give a hug to Jakob. Obviously, very, very happy he made it. Obviously, Ely was already in. Got a nice team hug here. Just, honestly, great coverage. Coverage, I, coverage capture in this moment is, like, is so good. It's a big team hug. You know, uh, we killed it. And, honestly, it took so much of a sting out of it to, uh, to lose to a teammate, have it, if it had been some random, you know, whatever, some random person, and my teammate didn't make didn't make top four, it would have hurt so much more. So, uh, after team splits and everything, I made twenty five thousand dollars, which is absurd, uh, and that's really really great. And um, and yeah, just uh, an unbelievable event. Unfortunately, again, if you, I, I did a recap. I'll go. I'm not gonna go over everything too closely here, but those are the games. Uh, again, my article coolstuffinc.com on Friday will have uh, my entire sideboard guide for both decks. Um, so looking for that as well as some card estimation and stuff like that. So this is my match review. Uh, you do folks love you like, comment, subscribe. You're all great. Let me know what you think. And whew, damn, damn.